Good evening, everyone. In accordance with the requirements of the Open Meeting Law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel. Is there any public comment from the board? Sure, I have a public comment. Um, for a while now, um, I've talked about maybe moving our meetings um, to a more ADA compliant place. I know it's just part of a solution because um, town offices would still be here and we had that on our agenda one night and it was voted down four to one. Um, I did receive, I just wanted to share um, somebody's message to me um, based on their experience bringing their wife here um, in a wheelchair. Um, and this isn't somebody I knew prior to receiving this. Um, the existing town hall is by no means even close to being ADA friendly. First, there appears to be a single HP spot out front. When pulling in to it, my wife's door opened to an extremely uneven brick walkway and a uh, curbstone. I had to put her chair on the sidewalk, and thankfully, since she can temporarily pivot, we made it work, but she almost fell out of the chair. Also, the, the ramp from the road to the sidewalk is behind where the cars pull in. Inside the building, uh, there was barely enough room for my wife to maneuver into the lift. On that lower level, it's just too tight to be practical or friendly. And then he said, I've attached photos of, of what he was talking about and what he experienced. Um, and so um, I hate to be a broken record, but when it's something important, I don't mind it. Um, every single night we're here, there's typically an empty meeting space in the Eagle House. And there's often, um, unless they have something booked, empty collaborative meeting rooms in the $72 million middle high school. And those two buildings are ADA compliant with ADA compliant bathrooms, push uh, button door opens, uh, handicap parking. The high school has the internet to live broadcast and we have the equipment, a TriCaster 455 that can live broadcast. So we could free and immediately have meetings in a more compliant place. And the Eagle House, I don't think we've tested the internet speed, but if we did, that certainly could be something where we could have a meeting like this in a more ADA compliant place. Um, I bring it up again because I just don't understand why we wouldn't go on a pathway to provide access and in terms of coming into the, you know, if you're coming in to, do, to visit the town clerk, you'd have the same experience. So there's obviously a long-term solution that's needed there, but participating in government and being able to come participate in a meeting and be a part of our town's democracy, we can give better outcomes immediately. And I don't understand why we're not engaging in that, but I thank you to the resident who shared his experience to me and I apologize to him that we're not taking solutions available to us. Thank you. Any other public comment from the board? Any public comment from the public? Okay. Our first appointment is at 7.05, which is for a special one-day alcohol license, beer and wine for St. Boniface Parish at 817 Mass Ave on September 29th. Good evening, uh, Tom Bodkin, Beale Street. Uh, Claude Poirier, Wildwood Road. And we're here on behalf of the uh, St. Boniface Committee uh, for the Oktoberfest for a one-day liquor license on uh, September 29th. So we're bringing Oktoberfest a few days early. Mm -hmm. So our second annual, the second year. Mm -hmm. Things went very well last year as well. You see the applications and a, a memo in your packet. Mm -hmm. Make a motion we approve the one day beer and wine license and the temporary food establishment permit application i would second that any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. 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 any opposed good luck have a good much. day thank you very thank much you. join Catherine. us join us on the 29th mm -hmm. Our second appointment this evening is a meeting with the Council on Aging Director regarding, regarding becoming an age-friendly, dementia-friendly community and signage for the Eagle House Senior Center. Sue Doherty. Hi, um, I'm Sue Doherty, the director at the Eagle House Senior Center. 
Um, I'm here just to report on the progress of the age slash dementia friendly Lunenburg initiative that we're trying to do. Um, what I'd like to do is just do a brief PowerPoint. There's a very short video on there that's really kind of its understanding. I'd like to people at home to see it. So um, I'm going to get that going. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe if I held it the right way. Okay. One minute. <laughs> okay. Let me start. Take your time. We're ahead, of, we're ahead of schedule anyway. While I'm getting that going, um, this is Judy Tarbell. She's a member in our Council on Aging, and she'd like to talk to you about um, getting some more senior center signage to make it more visible for people to find. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Judy Tarbell, and I have a problem. People cannot find the senior center in Lunenburg. People come to me from all other towns. Where is your senior center? I tell them how to get there. Take the by the teen center. There's no sign on the teen center. So there is finally I noticed a couple of days ago there's a little sign this big, Memorial Drive, and down the other end by the library. They're faded out. It says senior center. So what I would like to have happen is put a larger sign on the signpost, but move it down. But nothing big. We we came up with an idea similar to this if you can see it mm -hmm. it would say senior Cent lunenburg senior center and then eagle house senior community center so maybe i mean i go to towns and they have big signs they have big signs in pepperell i mean the, the pepperell is way in and the signs right at their corner so when you get there so these people have been coming to me and coming to me about a sign on the corners but maybe a little larger and down a little bit because it's right up next to memorial you can't even see it so that's my idea here okay Seem, seems reasonable we have uh yeah we have something to check in or we i notice we have the land use director and the dpw director with us tonight anybody want to take a shot at telling us why that no. i would assume the um the board would take the recommendation or the town would take the recommendation of the DPW director on the proper signage and clues of all the other pertinent departments and um, they are able to supply those signs as well. I mean nothing large, nothing gaudy, just so little so people can find it. When they do actually, I get them to find it, they love it here. They come back, they bring their friends. so. You know, it is a very nice place, and these people love it, so. Sure. Something. Okay, why, why don't, uh, if you can't come to the office, I'll come to you. Tell me what you'd like. I'll run it past uh, so, Chief. Oh. Excuse me. I'll run it past Chief Marino, and I'm sure we can help you out. Specialty signs take a little longer to... Um, to order oh, this is so just we a... can get whatever you'd like okay. okay that would be awesome sure so thank you very much no problem <laughs> that was easy <laughs> <laughs> if they were all that easy yeah Where's that button <laughs> <laughs> how we doing so good okay can i just take this off <laughs> so thank you for helping um, so we can start the um, PowerPoint right now. We're going to start with a short video. I hope the sound's working. If you just hit it, it'll start. <laughs> there we go. No sound. Anyways, this is Alice Bonner. She is the secretary of the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. That's her mother. 
and she's speaking about dementia friendly Massachusetts and dementia friendly um, America and how it needs to be brought to the forefront of the attention of people to show what's going on uh, pretty much people with dementia um, they really need to be treated with respect, have a place to go where, you know, no stigma or anything like that. They want to do things. Their care partners want to go places with them. Um, Dementia Friendly America is just an initiative right now. Uh, it's getting big. Governor Baker supports it tremendously. Um, we're starting our first memory cafe in uh, Lunenburg a week from Friday, and we're really excited about it. And now uh, Lunen, uh, Massachusetts has 90 memory cafes now. They had 83 when we first started, and now they're up to 90. So I really wish you could hear the sound on this because it was really good video. <laughs> but at any rate, so Alice Bonner, she's, she, this is her mother, and um, she's a big advocate for the dementia-friendly movement in Massachusetts. Maybe we can just skip over to the next slide. It's no good without the sound. <laughs> so right here, I know it's small print, but this is just a little, um, little information on uh, dementia-friendly Massachusetts. And I can't see. I'm really having a good night tonight. <laughs> so an estimated 5.4 million people in the United States and more than 130,000 Massachusetts residents are living with dementia which is a general term for changes in thinking, such as a memory loss and difficulty planning and communicating. Um, defining dementia friendly is by working together, we can make strides in supporting individuals living with dementia, as well as their friends and families. A dementia friendly community is informed, safe, and respectful, and enables people living with dementia and those who care about them to live full, engaged lives. The map on the bottom shows Massachusetts as can't see it it's so small and my glasses aren't big enough early and anyways early we are like number two in the nation I think New York is in front of us we can go to the next slide and it's just showing what the dementia friendly initiative in Massachusetts is all about uh, the little box on the bottom is who you get involved businesses and employees independent living and community engagement emergency planning and first responders neighbors and community members it goes on and on we can go to the next one so we've already begun the steps to becoming uh, dementia friendly Lunenburg Heather uh, invited uh, Pam McLeod from executive office of elder affairs to come up to the last department head meeting and she went through what it is to become what it takes to become a dementia friendly community and what you need to do is create a multi-sector work group which is called an action team assess communities dementia friendliness create an action plan and then implement those improvements and go to the next and how can we make lunenburg designated as dementia friendly well, we've already gone through three steps of it. There's five steps. We consulted with the Dementia Friendly uh, Project Manager, which was Pam McLeod, and she gave us a check on that very first day that she came to the um, department head meeting. Um, I've created an action team, and we have yet to identify a leader that will come. We got people from all over the community, and you'll see that in the uh, next slide. You get three or more community sectors engaged, such as uh, the religious aspect, business aspect, government, banks, business. Um, you, then once you have your group formed, you create an action plan. And that includes involvement of persons living with dementia. And then in the end, you sign the dementia friendly page, which will put us on the map as a dementia friendly community in Massachusetts. So like I said, I contacted some people and um, people who have committed or groups, uh, uh, Mr. Ebersol from the Board of Selectmen, thank you very much. Uh, the school superintendent from the Lunenburg Schools, and she's also engaged a um, community service student to help out. Uh, Lunenburg Library is interested in participating. Um, the Lunenburg Council on Aging has two members. Uh, one is a registered nurse, and she also sits on the board from Montachusett Home Care. And the other one is a speech pathologist. 
Uh, we have two representatives from public safety. We have the community resource officer, Brad McNamara, and the EMS coordinator, um, Karen Weller. Lunenburg Business Association is hooking on. Uh, Darren from there, the chairperson I believe he is, he wants to be involved. He can be our business liaison. Uh, United Parish Church, Pastor Farah, has agreed to come on. Community-based services and supports, we have a home care agency that wants to come on, and he's also serving as my facilitator for the Memory Cafe. And neighbors and community members, I can't tell you how many people are so interested in this, and they just, I, I think I have 14 people, and all I need was five. So, <laughs> so that's a really good thing to see everybody involved. <coughs> And so just to end that slide, there's some websites you can go to. And I just kind of want to do the difference between, you know, I know it's an age dementia friendly initiative, but there's been some changes with the state, who's running which department and who's doing which initiative. And um, the former coordinator of the dementia friendly part, her name was, is Emily Kearns, and she is no longer doing it. They have somebody else coming in, but I did speak to Emily today. And she suggested to me that um, this is such a large undertaking right now that we stick with what we know and right now that's the dementia friendly aspect of it and then get your feet wet and then you can focus in and add in the age friendly components so that seems to be the game plan right now uh, we'll be meeting with everyone in October. We haven't determined a date yet. I wanted to come here first. And like I said, our first Memory Cafe is a week from Friday. We've had a lot of interest in it, people in the community, people from outside of the community in different towns. They, they want to come up. Uh, it's going to be really great. I've applied for some grants for it, and you know, hopefully they all come in. I can use my uh, formula grant funding for it. We have a gift fund with the town at the Council on Aging that can be used for it. But it's, it's on a roll. We've started, and hopefully we can finish it up and go the full route. So that's it. Great. Any questions or? Any questions or comments? For Sounds like a great initiative. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a question. Do you need any more formal members of the team? My background. Um, is in pharmacy and when I worked for Pfizer I worked with a, um, a dementia product and oh, that's a topic that's always been near and dear but it's absolutely okay. absolutely I'll let you know I'll email you and as soon as we set up the date that would be great great to have you all right thank you and then the link that didn't play can this be put on our new website and and build like an yes oh, definitely so definitely. that if people want to watch it really, did you see it did you get it from I have it in here. I haven't watched it with audio. Oh, okay. Audio. It's, really, it's a really good video. It really is. And it explains a lot and just opens your eyes to things. So I apologize for that. Nope, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Our next appointment is the Complete Streets Tier 3 Project Application. You folks are right on time, 7.20, very good. We're trying. Uh, good evening, Rich Benevento from uh, World Tech Engineering. Um, we're here tonight to talk about the next phase of your Complete Streets program. So congratulations on adopting a Complete Streets policy that was approved uh, by MassDOT, and then of course having a Complete Streets uh, accepted prioritization plan. So uh, tier one and tier two are behind us, and we're now off to tier three, which is actually construction funding. So. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the next uh, steps in the process. Uh, also, uh, which projects have been identified on your uh, approved prioritization plan. So prioritization plans, you have to have at least 15 projects on your plan. Um, the town had 15. Some communities have many. We were working with the town of Plymouth. They had 80, which was <laughs> really unrealistic. But Somewhat. they kept adding projects right up to the last minute, you know. Um, but. Uh, We've identified uh, four projects uh, on your prioritization plan. Um, MassDOT, uh, when this program first started, um, 
Uh, of course, there was a lot of advertising of the program. And I've never seen in my many, many years in the business, particularly working with Mass DOT, have seen a program so promoted and so advertised as the Complete Streets program. So in the beginning, they were trying to get cities and towns to participate in the program. Uh, and now there is a lot of participation, uh, which really has been exceeding the amount of uh, funding that they have for the program. So uh, lo and behold, the program has become very competitive. Um, Having said that, the good news is, particularly for the town of Lunenburg, um, is that uh, MassDOT has notified cities and towns in the Commonwealth that uh, if you have received a Complete Streets Award in the past, do not apply for this round, because they're only going to be looking at communities that have not received Complete Streets funding. So that's a good thing. Um, the other thing is, in identifying projects, um, uh, in the beginning, again, it was, uh, there was more money than there were projects. They were a little bit more um, open with what kind of projects were uh, being accepted, uh, even though there are, they are very specific. For example, you can't use complete streets money, for example, to pave roads. They want to see sidewalks. They want to see pedestrian improvements. They want to see bicycle facilities. They want to see those sorts of things. Um, so the, uh, the, the program has is, is, uh, been a little bit more stringent. In saying that, um, they're also a little bit, it's, as I said, it's competitive, so they're really looking for uh, projects that uh, can check as many boxes as possible, right? Uh, does the project provide connectivity? Uh, sidewalks connecting facilities, things like that. Are they providing ADA compliance? Are, they, are we putting in new handicap ramps and, and things of that, na that nature? Are we improving safety? Uh, uh, all those sorts of things. So the four projects that were identified on, uh, uh, off of the town's approved Complete Streets uh, prioritization plan uh, were really connecting sidewalks uh, beginning down at uh, Northfield Road uh, along Oak Avenue um, through Main Street and then down um, connecting uh, to the school on Memorial Drive. And the idea of that is, is to close sidewalk gaps, improve the sidewalks that are there, provide handicap accessibility uh, ramps, and, and those sorts of things. So, um, and I can go off of, uh, right off of your list, you had uh, Main Street and, and Oak Avenue sidewalk connections. That was actually identified as project number one. Uh, project number four off the list was uh, in the village area, improving pedestrian connections uh, from, Ritter, from the Ritter building to Town Hall. Uh, Project number eight was in the village area, Memorial Drive improvements, we just spoke about that. And then project number 10, uh, Oak at Northfield intersection improvements. There's two intersections within this project area, uh, Northfield at Oak Avenue, uh, as well as Highland Street uh, at Main and Oak. Um, there's multiple conflict points. Uh, and so the idea here is, is to try and uh, improve the safety at those locations and also provide sidewalks uh, through those locations as well. Uh, just one thing, too, about your prioritization plan. Um, one, two, three doesn't mean one is the most important, two is the next, three is the next. You can pick uh, anything off your prioritization plan. Uh, the other thing, too, is you can combine projects as well, and you can combine other improvements uh, as part of this. So uh, some communities have had TIP projects, for example, uh, and they've uh, included complete streets components to, to, uh, to a project like that. Uh, or they've used Chapter 90 or local funds. So, uh, because there are, as I mentioned, there are some things that you can't use complete street money for. So um, it does provide an opportunity to sort of parlay that money into other things. But the focus here is really the sidewalk connections and closing those gaps uh, and providing connectivity from the schools into the downtown, connecting town hall, and really kind of making that a connection. Um, one of the other things, too, just in terms of the funding of the project, Complete Streets funding uh, for Tier 3 applications is up to $400,000. Um, the, um, the estimates, and we're, we're still in the process, by the way, of preparing the Tier 3 application, which is, a, is due October 1st. So we still have a little bit of work to do, but in preparation of tonight's meeting, we uh, prepared a, an estimate of major items of work, things like uh, the sidewalk components, the curbing, all those sorts of things, signage, uh, et cetera, just so that we could come up with uh, sort of an order of magnitude cost. But we're still refining that. But just based uh, on this point right now, um, the, uh, the first project that I mentioned, which is actually projects one, four, and eight, uh, which is uh, 
uh, everything except the Northfield uh, at Oak Avenue intersection. That tallies up to about uh, $210,000 worth of complete street components. Um, and there's about $280,000 of other uh, items that the town may want to do, whether they're going to overlay the road or other things that are not complete street components. Um, project number 10, which is actually, um, which is actually Northfield at the uh, Oak Avenue to tee that intersection up, uh, that is about $110,000 worth of complete street component money and about $210,000 of, of either town money or however the town would, uh, would be funding that. So all in all, the complete street uh, components add up to about $330,000. That's what would be on the Tier 3 application. Uh, and then the other work, if the town decided that they want to include that, would be in the order of $490,000 if, if the town, as I said, wanted to uh, include that with the complete street uh, work. So, um, as I said, we're still in the process of completing the application. We'll be refining these numbers, uh, as well as uh, providing um, the information that MassDOT is looking for. Just to give you an idea, this was your tier, this was your tier two application. This was your prioritization plan. There's several pages. Uh, it identifies the projects, the longitude and latitude, all that kind of stuff. Um, the tier three application, which I just had in my hand, is looks similar but it's whittled down quite a bit it's just the projects that you're submitting so it's 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 basic information that mass dost is looking for uh and it's a, it, this is a standard application uh and it uh uh it's uh, it, there's not really a lot additional stuff to it but as i said we're refining the components of the estimate uh and the narrative description of what the projects are that was kind of a broad brush, but I can answer any questions if you want to talk about uh, anything relative to this. Mr. Chair, if I may ask a question, um, I, and I have a couple. Um, mostly one, I don't understand, and I guess this is more for maybe Heather, when we selected number one, four, eight, and 10, because out of the 15, we haven't had any community discussion. The last coffee with the chief I was at, there was a bicyclist there, and he was very interested in having input or talking about the plans. I know I loved project number three, um, and you know the price is similar to all these combined projects. So who selected one, four, eight, and 10? I can actually. So um, when we look at the projects, one of the things that MassDOT is looking for are, well, let me back up for a second. We submitted a project in Middleton. We thought it was great. It had connectivity, had, had, it was connecting to a bike trail, didn't get selected. Um, what they're really looking for is projects that are going to really have a big bang for the buck within the community. Um, we have uh, advised the town, after looking at the prioritization plan, what we believe, having done many of these, what we believe MassDOT will be looking at in terms of these are good projects, these are the ones that we can support. You can submit. You can submit anything on your prioritization plan because you have an approved prioritization plan. But the idea here is, is to, as I just mentioned, how many boxes can we check off that, that when they look at this, they're going to say, yes, that's a good project. And by the way, there's no guarantee that when you submit this that you're, that you're going to uh, be granted uh, during this next round. Um, it's very competitive. But, um, and I, I, I met with, uh, the, the, um, with Heather and uh, Jack to sort of discuss what's on the plan, caucused in my office with our engineers who have been doing complete streets work, and that's kind of what our recommendation was. So I, I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, my follow-up question would be, um, we maybe have some sort of grant possibly coming for $400,000 for streetscape improvements through Dean Tran, and I imagine that having something to do with the center of town and this Ritter intersection and whatnot. Is there an overlap there? Is there those two completely different there wouldn't circumstances um, it would be an additional benefit to the overall project it wouldn't there wouldn't be conflict between the two no and, and one other thing to just to add to that um as we're we're at you know in in the tier three application stage there might be 15 steps we're on we're on step two where this is just submitting and trying to secure that funding once that funding uh uh, the town is notified that the funding has been approved. You get a notice to proceed. You have a certain amount of time to do the work. Um, there'll be a certain amount of design, public input, uh, and that sort of thing that can happen to make sure that the project is tailored to the specific needs of the community, certainly, and also falling within the guidelines of the Complete Street Program. So if there are other things that are going on, those things can be combined. 
uh, or they can be done separately. But as part of a design process, we'd want to make sure whatever is happening over here is going to dovetail with what's happening over here. That's, that would be the intent. Okay, and I'm almost through my questions. One is I don't have a picture of the town hall to Ritter. Is there a schematic or something of that? The, um, so again, at this point, we haven't we haven't designed anything yet. We came up with some concepts with the, uh, and I can I can give these to you so you can just take a look and pass them along. Um, we came up with some concepts just in terms of, for example, what uh, Highland at, uh, at Oak looks like. Yeah, that's in our package. We have we those. Have I was just looking for the version of that because you said the, we don't have the one. We don't for have the, a picture of what the Ritter to the, the schematic town hall. would be to connect Ritter to Town Hall, but we no. have them for the other ones. No, we have we haven't. There's no design to that yet. Okay. If you yeah. look at the big picture and then make it bigger, it yeah, goes, that, cuts through the common. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all I was going to say, uh, Mr. Ebersol. Is it comes through the common, Mrs. Adams. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you would come across the crosswalk from the Ritter, and um, there's a ramp there. And we uh, we propose to put a pathway, concrete pathway, or otherwise through the garden area, sure. cutting across to the corner of town hall, okay. because people now have to walk, as you know, along uh, Main Street or in traffic one way or yeah. the other. So, okay. um, but as Rich says, we haven't have a complete design for that. Okay. My last, um, it's not a question. It's just input on number ten, which is Northfield and Oak Ave, and improving that intersection. Um, before anybody improves that or change that, you might want to watch drop off and pick up at Turkey Hill because a lot of people use that triangle to reroute themselves. And if you teed it, everybody has to go left or right on Northfield. Yeah, yeah. And probably about 50% of the parents that drop off use that triangle to get back around and head back towards town center. Exactly, and that's, that's why we identified this years ago because each principal, assistant principal, that's worked there in the last 15 or 20 years has identified that intersection as a problem. Part of the problem being that there's no rhyme or reason when folks go down and try to loop back and come back. So we want to give it some uh, some structure. Okay, but looping is impor it. it's an important part of that process. Well, Kind of You'll send everybody off process. in that direction they, instead. They may end up going down Northfield Road and coming back Turkey Hill. And that intersection at Northfield to 2A is a bad intersection. So if you route everybody out to that intersection, that's a really difficult spot in the morning. All the school buses are heading to the primary. The fact that a lot of traffic turns around and heads back away from Northfield is, so, is sort of an important part of the loop. We've been dealing with quite a bit of school. We just finished a major circulation plan for the schools in Hopkinton. It's a massive com complex, high school, middle school, uh, lower grades, and then they just built another high school across the, street, across the street from it or another middle school across the street from it. So Yeah, drop off and pick up. No yeah, joke. Drop off and pick up, <laughs> yeah. No, well. Okay, thank you. So this, this is a status update on, on where you are. Is there a decision point imminent? There's, there's really no decision point with the exception that um, – you're you're in favor of of trying to secure uh, complete streets money. I, I presume that's that's the whole purpose that uh, that you've embarked on complete streets, and so really this is just sort of an update as to where we are to give you a little bit of of a, of a feel of how the program moves forward. Uh, some of the things just to be aware of, uh, some of the things that I think are good things, the fact that this is only for communities that have not received complete streets funding in the past. You know those sorts of things, but. Um, really, the application is due October 1st. You know, we get that application in. Uh, hopefully, uh, the town is successful in securing those funds. And then we're moving forward with preparing, you know, bid doc contract bid documents. Uh, I presume there's some uh, public participation uh, or some public input. Just talking, particularly because it's around schools, it's always important. Um, it's not a major reconstruction, say, like Summer Street. I mean, we're adding sidewalks and, and things of that nature, and we're trying to clean up some of the traffic at those, uh, at those two intersections that have multiple conflict points. So um, long-winded answer to your question. Uh, there's, really, there's really nothing that's necessary relative to uh, tonight, uh, with the exception of that the, that the board is in support of applying. Mr. Chair, may I ask a couple questions? Sure. Um, one question is when it, 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 it has to be submitted October 1st, when about do you find out? That's a wild question because I'll, because they, uh, they often pick a date that uh, we should hear by. Uh, my guess is that it would be sometime in November, 
however, the lieutenant governor typically likes to call the communities directly. Uh, and so I know in the last round, uh, the decisions had been made, but the phone calls were a little, you know, weren't, weren't getting out as soon as the decisions were being made. So, so within a couple of months. With, I, I, would, I would think um, they will announce it um, after the application. Right now, the, the big date is October 1st. Once the applications are in, and um, I, I'm, I'm in contact with quite a few people uh, at MassDOT, they're in the... Uh, uh, managing the Complete Streets program, and we can we can get an idea of that. And I can let uh, I can let Heather know and, and Jack know, and she can pass that on as to when they would be making that decision. I know they like to move it forward because it's actually in the bond bill. Uh, it's it's uh, it money has to be spent. So that's the other thing. Once you get the award, they will say this. So for example, the the awards that were just uh, made. Matter of fact, the lieutenant governor was in Peabody uh, last week to hand out all the little certificates. So you can, they don't give the big cardboard checks anymore. They're smaller now. Um, <laughs> Saving money. Yeah, that's right. Um, but uh, that money has to be spent by uh, the end of next year. Um, so it's, there's, there's timelines with this. Have like a fiscal year to complete it. Correct. Yep. Um, I have one more question. When we get the money for a complete streets project, is it all the money you need for the project, or is there a certain amount the town has to kick in? So, so... The, the, the work that I identified, $330,000 that are comp complete streets elements, those are, those are all, that's all complete streets money. Um, it's handled just like Chapter 90. So the town will get a contract from the district office in, in District 3. Um, the town will have to sign it just like a Chapter 90 um, contract. And uh, the town will request reimbursement just like Chapter 90. So it's, it'll be another line item on your, on your Chapter 90 uh, balance sheet. It'll be for complete streets. And so you'll do your reimbursements with your state aid uh, engineer, uh, and it'll, it'll be that same process. But whatever is approved um, by MassDOT in terms of the amount, uh, that's all complete streets money. Now, as I said, if the town chooses to supplement that money and do some other things, let's say, for example, uh, the town wants to overlay the street in addition to putting in the sidewalks and the curbing, that would be uh, town money that you could that you could use in concert with that. But Complete Streets is providing all of the money for the specific projects. We don't have to kick in any money for those specific projects unless we want to do additional things. Right, or, or, or items that are not eligible for Complete Streets funding. Right. right, correct. Yep. Thank you. Are there items that are not eligible for Complete Streets in the projects? Or they, they just they were, they were fine. We, we separated some things out, just pr you know, presuming again, just uh, just thinking outside a little bit, presuming that maybe there's some paving or things like that 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 uh, that the town may want to do. But in terms of doing the sidewalks and reconfiguring these intersections, that's pretty much all complete streets money. Okay, thank you. Great to get extra money to do the things that we want to do, anyways. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. All Appreciate set? it. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Our 730 uh, appointment is a joint meeting with the Sewer Commission. Uh, I see the chair and a quorum, I believe, of the Sewer Commission. Want to call your meeting to order, sir? Sure. The 918 uh, Sewer Commission meeting to order. In attendance is me, uh, Joe Anderson, the chair. We have the vice chair, Carla, and member uh, Ryan Stober is here as well. So we have a quorum. Thank you. About this. And the only, mem mo only thing on our agenda is the uh, legal fee discussion with, with you folks. Correct. So I'm going to ask the town manager to walk us through that. Certainly. So in your packet is a letter that. I sent to the Sewer Commission in June regarding uh, previous meetings that I had with the Sewer Commission, myself, and the Finance Director regarding legal costs that were incurred by the Sewer Commission through use of Town Council. And um, it was my recommendation that as an enterprise, these costs should be borne by the enterprise and not be paid out of the general appropriation for legal expenses. So um, when I met with the Sewer Commission in um, July, um, was that the uh, probably. June? <laughs> around that, it was summertime. Around, that, around then, it was their um, 
belief that they would abide by a certain hourly rate um, that they felt was reasonable. And um, I stand by my recommendation that it would be prorated based on use of hours and divided by the, the total retainer for each month. Um, after reviewing the expenses for fiscal 18, the uh, total use um, based on that formula, if you were to take the total hours divided by the hours that the Sewer Commission used Town Council um, to come up with a rate, a total of $6,796 was expended by the Sewer Commission. They did budget 5000 this year in the fiscal 19 budget. What I would ask then is that um, we proceed with that they appropriate those funds towards legal expenses and we review this closer to the end of the fiscal year to see where we're, we stand. Yep, and that's what we voted on Tuesday, is that uh, as a commission we do the 5000 that we budgeted and then review with you guys next time, go, next go around so we can budget properly. Okay, because there is the ability to transfer funds within the budget. There is, but it's hard to budget expenses. the prorated rate. Um, with it, we don't know what the use is going to be per month, so it's been changing. So we want to try and figure out for the next go around how we can mm -hmm. figure that out or come up with an hourly rate or, or something similar to that. I don't know if other enterprise funds in town do the same thing that we do. Um, you are the, you are the, you are the only enterprise fund. It, I know, yeah. the, the water so, department is, so but there's no real. It's a, it, it's tougher, obviously, to budget for us if we don't know what that pro rate rate is going to be. So if if council's not used for the month uh, or or used minimally, then our rate will be higher. Same way, if it's used a lot and we use, it'll be lower. But it's hard to budget that that fund without knowing what the rate will be. Um, so we budgeted 5000 for this year, and we have no problem just giving that to the town for, to cover our expenses and then come back and review it. I, I did watch your meeting, and I, I thought that some of the discussion was a little confusing. I, I think that it's difficult for any business, especially an enterprise fund, to run its business on a, a fluctuating basis. Uh, I, and one of the reasons that we chose the model we did when we uh, went with uh, uh, meet Dalliman uh, was that one of the things they offered was a flat rate uh, that we could use, you know, except for litigation to to balance our budgeting process. Uh, obviously, we don't have a lot of history, so we, we're in a kind of a period of time when we're trying to assess the best way to budget. Uh, I I think that you know if if we were to look at the amount of money you actually spend with the lawyers that's one way to look at it the other is that the whole idea of having office hours with legal counsel to reduce our need for uh additional legal counsel for right. litigation etc is part of the the benefit of yeah. the, of we do the take program of that too, yeah. right exactly so i i mean i think i think the solution seems reasonable to me uh, I certainly like to hear from the rest of the board, but it you know it's it's a case where I think it would be foolish for us to 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 try to track this down to the hour and say we had a month where you didn't use them at all and the next month you used them a lot. I, I think that once we have some history, we can say that you know you use town council in general ten percent of the total town or eight percent or six percent or whatever it is, and we have some history to say that you should budget accordingly and then we would encourage you and everybody else to use their office hours to keep to keep our expenses down i, I think that makes sense uh, carl luck uh 50 sunset lane um and that, that's all good so I'm, I'm glad there's it sounds like going with for right now the our budgeted amount of five thousand for this fiscal year would would be a great solution. Every, everything's fixed. The only thing I, I, I would suggest is that we consider taking the next step, whatever that is, for next fiscal year. We really need to take that before we do the budget for next fiscal year, which means between now and January, February, we should know how we're going to treat it next fiscal year so we can properly budget. So I, I, I just don't want to wait till the end of this fiscal year to start the discussion again because we'll have already, you know set it aside so i would encourage us to set some meetings up we'll, we'll figure it out 
yeah. it, it would seem to me that your business manager and the town manager could work out based yeah, historically on, on what makes the most sense as we so. put our budgets together. Right. And, and the the other thing too is that if you have the five thousand that you're going to be allocating to the town council thing, that if you have some lawsuit that comes up separate from that, that would be in addition to, so you'd have to address that within your budget. Um, not that anything's going on at the moment, but the, the assumption is that if there's something that we would slash you would get charged for because it's not within the retainer, then that would be something that have would have to be different. Right. Yeah, that, I think that. I, Glad you had that last yeah. comment. If it's, it should track the town's agreement. Right. So if it's right. within the retainer, it should be within. If it's not, then, it, right. then right. it's not. Yeah, seems fair. So that's all we had. It sounds like we're all on the same page. I work for you. Great. Okay. It's easy enough. Thank you very much. I'll take a uh, motion to adjourn the sewer commission meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks Good very night. much. Okay. Next item has to do with the resignation of the building inspector, Andrew Hudson. Can you, I know that you have something in your manager report, but maybe we could take that as a separate item. Yes, there's actually a memo from the land use director in your packet. I'll read it aloud. It's from Adam Burney, land use director. Recently, both Gary Rhodes and Andrew Hudson have submitted separate and unrelated letters of resignation from the positions of building commissioner and local inspector respectively. If these resignations were to stand as of Thursday, September 20th, the town would be without a building inspector. Over the past 10 days, I've been working with both Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Hudson to resolve this issue for the interim from September 20th until the town is able to fill the position full time. In the coming weeks, Mr. Rhodes will be working limited hours in the building department office to answer residents and builders questions issue permits and perform plan reviews. Mr. Hudson will be performing the inspections on a reduced schedule outside of business hours. While the situation is not ideal as a long-term solution, in the coming months it will allow the office to remain functional while a candidate is sought to fill the position. As it stands, the building department has begun to slow slightly with fall and winter looming. I would ask the pa for the patients with non-emergency matters as there will be a need to balance between managing reasonable hours and ensuring all matters are handled in a reasonable time frame. The advertisement for the both positions has been posted on various websites and has run in the local paper. I am hopeful that suitable applicants will begin s submitting their interests soon. If you require further information, please do not hesitate to contact me. So the plan is to, um, that Andrew has agreed to um, not be full-time, it would be a part-time position for the interim uh, with a couple days a week at, in the evenings to do inspections and uh, Gary Rhodes has agreed to the same for a limited uh, time. So I thank both of those, uh, Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Hudson for their accommodations and helping the town out. Well, I thank all for making the best of a difficult situation. Is there, is there anything you need from us to, to uh, assist with the recruitment in this difficult time? If you know of people that would like to apply, <laughs> <laughs> submit an application, please. Okay. But it is a top priority. We're trying to fill yes. both of those positions. We're going to be looking at the applicant pool. If we receive a qualified building commissioner, we won't need to appoint a local inspector. We will need an alternate to fill in when the building commissioner is out of the office. But you've posted for both positions yes. at the moment. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. We, we don't have to accept no the resignation. Okay, fine. All righty. The town manager report. There's an item in the beginning of the report. I'll wait because that comes along further in the agenda for the ADA self-evaluation. Move to regional animal control facility update. The architect has completed a preliminary design of the facility that included space needs identified by the Lunenburg and Townsend animal control officers. The architect visited both Lunenburg and Townsend's current kennels, as well as a site visit to the town of Sterling's animal control facility. The optimal location for the facility is behind the public safety building, but the site is not optimal. 
The driveway to the proposed facility would need to be cut into the hillside from the northwest corner of the existing driveway, and there is the possibility the building would be on ledge. Ledge was not shown on the as-built drawings for the public safety building, so we will need to, do, to order borings to test the soil. The engineer is currently working on stormwater management for the site and considering the possibility of expanding the existing detention basin. We should have additional information from the architect by next week. Employee voluntary life insurance. I received our voluntary life insurance renewal letter from Boston Mutual in July that included an 18% increase in rates. So I asked our benefit coordinator to contact our insurance broker to see if there were other options so employees would not see an increase. We had a meeting with Boston Mutual in August and they came back with a proposal with a, with a modernized plan that increases the limits of life insurance, includes changes to encourage a greater pool of people to join, and locks in our current rate for two years. We presented this plan to the public employee committee last week, and they were in favor with accepting the new plan. Existing employees on the current plan will have the option of keeping their existing plan or enrolling in the new plan during an open enrollment period. The Summer Street Groundbreaking Ceremony. We had a good turnout at the Summer Street Groundbreaking Ceremony on Wednesday, September 13th. Lieutenant Governor Polito, Mass DOT Highway Administrator Jonathan Gulliver, Senator Tran, Representative Hay, Representative Benson, Mayor Di Natale, Mayor Mazzarella, Chairman Toll, the contractor, Mass DOT representatives, as well as a number of other staff and public were in attendance. I want to thank again former Selectman Paula Bertram for her efforts as the MPO representative for advocating for this project, DPW Director Jack Radequins for pushing this forward by working with Fitchburg and Lemonster as a regional transportation improvement project, and the support, the Selectman and the voters of Lunenburg. And just for everyone's reference, we got this handy um, display of the project over there from MassDOT that was displayed at the event, as well as the citation that was presented from Representative Benson and Representative Haig. So. Fire department response to the Lawrence fires. <clears throat> Members of our fire department responded to the Lawrence fires as part of the statewide fire mobilization plan. We are part of District 8A task force that mobilizes engines, ladder trucks, chief officers, and crew to response to emergencies. Deputy Chief Peter Hyatt, Lieutenant Christos Lacadictus, if I can pronounce his name, Lieutenant Michael Byrne, Firefighter Austin Flagg, Firefighter Stephen Morse, and Reverend Andrew Burr responded to Lawrence utilizing Engine 1 as part of the task force on Thursday evening and returned safe around 3.30 a.m. Friday morning. On Friday evening, Chief Sullivan went to Lawrence in response to a need for fire chiefs to assist at the command post, and Reverend Burr returned to Lawrence on Saturday with the Mass Corps of Fire Chaplains to assist with shelters. I want to thank Chief Sullivan and the other members of the Lunenburg Fire Department for responding to this crisis in Lawrence and over in North Andover and helping with those in need. An update on the blue donation bins at the Lunenburg Crossing. Our town departments worked diligently with the property owner at Lunenburg Crossing to address the problem with the donation bins. The police department, building department, land use director, and our agent from Neshoba Associated Boards of Health were part of the response. Andrew Hudson, the local building inspector, notified me Thursday that the property owner was terminating the contract with the bin company, and Mr. Hudson contacted me yesterday that the bins have been removed and the site cleaned. I want to thank the various departments involved in resolving this issue and also as well the citizens that brought forth their com concerns. The Capital Planning Committee is in the process of setting a meeting date to begin the process for reviewing the fiscal 20 capital project requests and the possible date for that meeting is October 2nd at 5 p.m. at Town Hall prior to the selectmen's meeting. Oh, just over the cup next couple of weeks I just want to notify the <coughs> boards that I'll be out of the office um, on tomorrow for a regional dispatch meeting in Devons, September 24th, 
at a statewide conference for municipal officials in September 27th and 28th at a annual conference of the Mass Municipal Personnel Association. In announcements, Town Council is holding office hours on Tuesday, October 16th, 2 to 6 p.m., Tuesday, November 27th, 12 to 4 p.m., and Monday, December 17th, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Another announcement we received in the mail was uh, from Carnegie Hero Fund Commission about an award um, that they issue that recognizes civilian her hero heroism and awards a medal to its recipients. And it has been awarded to Lunenburg resident John Hazelrig uh, for helping save Mr. Raveth Than from drowning in Lowell on January 3rd, 2018. And if the board would like to send a letter or citation to um, that resident, we'd be happy to put that together as well. And just uh, put all, as well as part of my report, vacancies for the ones that are currently being posted, building commissioner, local building inspector, assistant town mechanic, heavy equipment operator, laborer, and the vacancies that are on the following committees, Agricultural Commission, Architectural Preservation District Commission, Cultural Council, Public Access Committee, and Zoning Board of Appeals. There's some good news there. <laughs> Any questions or comments? <coughs> I'm really impressed with the speed with which those bins were removed from Lunenburg Crossing. That's great, because it was a mess. Mm -hmm great that the citizens brought it forward yes. good for them and thank you I, I have a couple of comments the the voluntary insurance one of the things you said is that uh, people on the current plan can keep it that would be yes. that increase would be for them and it would not be an increase to the town is that correct because it's voluntary it's, yep it's a hundred cent okay paid Fair enough. by the employees okay uh, the second one is you asked about whether we should prepare a letter for John Hazel Rig, I have no objection if the no, board is should. okay with that. That's a great idea. And then finally, in the list of vacancies, I noticed that on the Facebook page, the original posting for architectural preservation said agricultural preservation. And it and was corrected. Hopefully that was corrected, but I just wanted to <laughs> clear that up. We do believe in agricultural preservation as well, <laughs> but not in that case. Another <clears throat> committee you could create. That's right. <laughs> Any other comments on the town manager report? Okay, moving on to old business. Um, one of the things I just wanted to mention again, to be totally crystal clear, uh, we continue to list the Board of Selectmen goals on each of our agendas. The, the plan for that is to allow us to discuss at any meeting any of those goals. For instance, if we wanted to talk about maintenance or capital replacement, if we wanted to talk about the five buildings, if we wanted to talk about community involvement, if we wanted to talk about uh, the board's alignment with committees, it's part of our agenda and therefore we would be able to discuss it and deliberate on that topic. Uh, as the town manager and I put the agendas together, obviously if there were a particular item in those fields where we were gonna, uh, you know, have a detailed discussion on any of them, we would call that out as a separate item so that the town would be aware that we were discussing that night. But I just wanted to be clear that everybody feels comfortable that if we get into a discussion or a deliberation on any of those items that fall under our three goals, we would have covered it by having it on our standing agenda. Is that a valid assumption? I think that makes sense. I think it makes sense. Uh, clearly, if there's something, as you said, substantive or really important, that that gets distributed in advance of the meeting, so we're prepared to, for the discussion. For right. That. But it also allows us to bring a new item up that we could then start the discussion and bring it to a future meeting. My input would be, we wouldn't know until we started talking about these topics whether or not it was something we should have told people more about. So I feel like there's a real gray area in having something always on the agenda so we could always maybe talk about it. And then once we're talking about it, where's the slippery slope of like, wow, we're into some really big conversation and we technically can, but we didn't tell people. So I feel like it's sort of a, it prohibits good communication by having gray items on an agenda chronically. 
I think it's I, I I agree, and that's why I was saying what I was saying is that it, somebody could say, you know, I've I found a survey that somebody another town does regarding community involvement, and I'm going to distribute it tonight, um, and that allows me to talk about it. But we really ought to not have a big discussion because people just got it that night. So I think it's I would say that that our rules should be it's an opportunity to bring up concepts or topics so that people are aware of something like that. But if it's if it's a substantive discussion. Uh, I agree that that just because it's there every single time, um, somebody who's interested in one of those topics would have to come to every single one of our meetings. Like that, I wouldn't want to make a motion or take any action on these topics just because we technically can because right. we're being gray about it. I don't unless think. the information was in the packet and we were able to let the information ahead of time. So. Yeah. yeah, Jamie pointed out that he would have a separate agenda item if there was planned substantive discussion. But I don't think we'd know whether we reach substance or not until we were in the substance. That, that is my point. I, I wouldn't want to shut down our ability to have a discussion or deliberation to the point where we, where we say, gee, this is something important enough that we ought to make, it an agenda make an agenda item in, in the coming weeks. So I would consider maybe not having them there unless we were going to have an agenda item so that we could always be crystal clear whether or not we were talking about it. I mean, somebody might come to hear. There was one time I was, I was like, five buildings that jumped out at me, surprise. And then I was like, oh, it's just that same old thing. And it becomes a bit of a crying wolf if you always have something there. And well, then you finally talk about it one time. Well, I find it, I find it odd to call it a gray area when they're one of our three goals that we're working all year on. But an agenda really wants to inform everybody who's coming that they know what we're going to be walking through so that they can decide if they want to participate. If it's always there and we never talk about it, and then boom, we just talk about it one night, I feel like that's not really the, that's not really the purpose of posting an agenda in terms of communicating, which ironically is one of the goals. That's why I brought it up. Um, so I think it gives us the ability to talk about things without informing people and I think I'd rather just either have it as an agenda item we're actually working on or not have it there at all. Well, I'd rather have it there. I like the flexibility to initiate a discussion and, and be able to say, let's put it on a future agenda. It, it, I don't think we need to be that rigid. And I think that if we have that as our goal about the goals, that we raise an issue and be very mindful to not have uh, a discussion uh, that would be typically involving the public's input. So it, information providing, uh, and then if it's something that, that one or all of us believe that there should be public input, that we clearly don't take any vote, and we actually put it on an agenda item for a future meeting. Can um, we find a way to document that and describe it so it would say old business and these are items we may dis sort of what you said, but describe instead of it, it being so clearly, be we're going to talk about this tonight. That you know, it's, so it doesn't appear as an agenda. You, you item. become something. Not the words of saying, you know, uh, we may raise issues on this or uh, raise topics. I don't want to use the term non-substantive because we may say something substantive, but but clearly show it that don't think that this is going to be a big workshop topic the way this does look like now and then try it out for a month or two and see if something comes up and we talk about it and then somebody said remember we talked about this that I think we're going too far or yes that's exactly what I was thinking that we would do when we'd be able to talk about it I do like having the goals front and center every week because it's good to be reminded that that is what we need to be working on I think it's good to show the goals but not to have I mean you could essentially make an agenda that always has a little bit of everything on it so you could always talk about everything whenever you wanted and then you're not really following the intent of open meeting law but that's not what we're doing well no I mean it could be though it, but it isn't no but it what matters but is what isn't. could happen but but last year when we put the goals on there we didn't put them as agenda items we put them as these are our goals above the agenda um, and I, I, I agree that the intent 
versus what we're actually doing. And I've seen I, the planning board's an example of re, uh, simplifying their bud, their agenda because they had every possible thing on their agenda and their members said, wait a minute, we've got too many things in here on a regular basis. We sh only should be putting things that we're gonna actually get a report on. And so they took a lot of things off. I think that was one of the first things that Adam did when he came in as the, the, the new planning director. Um, what I would suggest we do is that we, we state what's there, which still allows us to talk about it, and that we monitor what we're doing over the next three months and see if there's something that's actually of a concern. Um, but I, I agree. I look at agendas and I think, you know, if one of the agendas was like the planning board, they're going to talk about marijuana retail, I want to show up for that, or I don't want to show up. And if it's always there, I'm going to have to go to every single meeting to have the opportunity to talk about that. So. That part I, I agree with. And that's a good point because even somebody could invest their time because they want to hear about five buildings and then we, we often brush over the school section. So I think we need to describe it. And I mean, I, would, I truly don't believe it belongs on the agenda unless we intend to talk about it because we can bring stuff up during public comments, action items and things and say, can we add, I had this idea or I saw this survey or all these things we just talked about, can we put that on our agenda for next week? And then your agenda is always up in front of what you're actually working on, which is the intent of open meeting. The other thing we can do is that we could rotate the goals each meeting, one, two, three, meeting one, two, three, and let's actually put it on there to say, here's an opportunity to talk about it so that may keep it more active as a goal discussion. It may not be a workshop discussion. I like that idea. So we'll actually work on our goals. We'll actually work on our goals. <laughs> there we go. That'd be cool. Instead of not working on our goals and having them there in case we want to. Right. Okay. I will uh, work on that as a... As a goal. As, a as, <laughs> as an action item. <laughs> Thank you. But I still continue to think that our goals are front and center and we should be able should to be. at least discuss them every week. Uh, the next old business item is Skateboard Park Committee and we have our illustrious Skateboard Park group here to give us an update. Gentlemen. Hi, my name is Aiden Moore. Um, a month's gone by, how, my, how time flies. <laughs> Here's our update in rhyme form and not a minute too late. Most importantly, the team is still sound. Every day we're breaking new ground. Added three more members to the team, high schoolers that share the dream. Fiscally, we're making great strides. Feel like the entire feels like the entire town is on our side. Word is spreading far and near. We've definitely got the momentum and thankfully tons of it here. The Miles for Miles team has come through in a huge way. Their tiered donation to the project certainly made our day. Though in terms of large donation, Ron Bouchard's is currently out in front of the crowd. The 5K we received from them made us gasp out loud. Happy to say new donations are coming in almost every day, and we are well on our way to 40K. We're still selling t-shirts, sweatshirts, and soon to be ski hats, though I'm being told these wristbands are where it's at. Our friends at Robbins Island even made us magnets to sell, and that too is going quite well. Even Orchard Hills has gone in on the act. They've donated a year's membership that we're raffling off to one lucky winner, in fact. On fundraiser updates, the golf tournament has been postponed to a sunny weekend coming spring 2019. We're confident we'll be able to execute this event with a fuller team. Also on tap is a family movie mid-November, The Grinch, and a large-scale poker tournament in early December. Public appearances have become second nature for this team. Stillman's Fair, school open houses, and several upcoming festivals will have us seeing even more green. We've engaged with local lawmakers in hopes of tapping into some state money. It's early, it's in the early stages, but we're in this to win, honey. We've also engaged with a professional marketing team, 190 West, heading up by Tom P, is working to refine our messaging and get it squeaky clean. Expect to see more, I'm being there's lots more in store. The boys are also taking the show on the road. First stop is a radio interview at WXLO, 
We've also booked interview sessions with Lunenburg Cable Access, Fitchburg Access TV, and the Tony Hawk podcast team. So tell your friends and family so they can all listen and see. A couple of items for discussion with you, four to be exact. Hang tight, grab a pencil, and we'll come back to a few. Keen to talk to you more about getting valuation on town land, we'd like to use it to put a to total value on the project at hand. Would also like to discuss participating in a townwide mailing. Getting all the eyes we can on this project will help us keep sailing. Also would like to engage other towns for PR, financial support, and goodwill. We'd like to find out if Groton, Lemonster, Shirley, and Eyre, for starters, are interested in helping us climb this hill. Lastly, thinking about the in-kind donations that are beginning to take shape, we'd like to capture the proposed land use in a letter of intent to help us seal its fate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I heard a couple action items in there. So clearly the uh, Board of Assessors should be able to get you the valuation of, it's not a separate parcel, but figuring out the estimated land you've got there, the, the assessors should be able to get you that value. We Only if you do it in a rhyme. I wrote that. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. I'm tapped. <laughs> Already bought a t-shirt, actually, too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so to your question, uh, we've been talking with Josh uh, in, in the office downstairs, and it's been probably two months that we've been waiting for a number. Um, so if you can help kind of move that along, it would be much appreciated. I, we, we've talked about, you know, how to get there. We just don't know what the inputs are to get there. The, the other way you may need to ask the question that sometimes they do it in an official, here's the valuation if you divide it off the property for legal reasons as opposed to we need an estimate that asks the question that this is not an accounting answer. Uh, that's exactly how the question was asked. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, okay. and we said, you know, ballpark-ish something. So, awesome. Um, that was one. And then there was the uh, letter of intent. Um, I don't know how you want to approach that. That is um, that the board had agreed that for the use of the property? Correct. 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 We're just looking to get some sort of uh, an official letter on record mm -hmm. that this is the intent of the piece of property um, so that we have that, you know, just on record for, the, for future reference. Yep. So our executive assistant did draft uh, Sample letter for the board to sign, just stating the date that the action was taken for the skate park, board park committee to use the property for that purpose. Excellent. So, can we have a draft copy of that to run by our attorney just to get things properly sorted? Because I'm assuming that letter of intent is still a letter of intent, it's not a guarantee because I'm part of the thing subject to the final design. And exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yes. So right now, we have a wonderful handshake it's, agreement. Just want to. It's all on TV. More formality be between us. Um, uh, keep going. Keep going. Okay. Um, and then uh, regarding a townwide mailing, so uh, Ms. New and I have been talking about uh, participating in some sort of a, an awareness campaign to use the taxation notices that are going out. I think it's at the end of this November. Yes. Um, and use it as a vehicle to get information about the, 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 the pro project out. Um, and that's actually something that we have the marketing organization working on designing something professional looking that we can insert into that. And again, for, for discussion, uh, and pardon me, I, I've never done this before, so I don't know <laughs> what the right or, or wrong, wrong. You know, there's a, there's a different is. price for small or big or, you know. There's no, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I gave pricing for full page, um, Half page, yeah. double sided, single sided. Uh, how do we get to un understanding what the options are? Mylene knows. Yes, right? the treasurer collector. Okay. Just ask exactly. her. She'll be able to tell you. Okay. And she also will tell you how much before <laughs> you, the bills go out. You need to have that because they have to give. You know, there's a whole series of things that has to happen. So. Do we provide you with the the content, or we provide you with the images and you print and you insert? How, how does that? get merged electronically you would provide it to us okay. and the printer does the printing, the printing. okay mm -hmm. for the set so, price so it can't be a cardboard thing that because mm -hmm. it's yeah. going to keep no, the no 3d pop-ups mm -hmm. okay i'm right. sure it's 
different price for its color and black and white, you know. And who and was her name? Mylene Mylene. Okay. She's so a tre treasure, treasure downstairs. Okay. Um, and then, dink, dink, dink. Yeah, the, only, the last thing on the list we, we had was uh, regarding getting introductions to your peers in other towns to do this sort of thing and take the show on the road um, beyond you know the radio and TV outlets that we've located, but to be able to do this in other towns just to get some, some more formal support behind the project. Um, so again, I don't know. And you, you said that's where I want the board's yeah. input and yeah, well, what, <laughs> what what actually is the purpose of that? Are, are you kind of inviting the other towns to come use your park, or are you well, encouraging them to start their own park, or just to try to understand what it is? So a number of people in surrounding towns have said, "Hey, we'd like to do something like this, but we really can't mobilize the way you get way you guys have." So we'd like to put some of our local resources, whether it be capital, just manpower, um, behind the project. And it's sort of an ad hoc thing right now. So if we can kind of go through, town, use town government to help get that message out to the people. Um, and again, sort of, you know, just, like we, I don't say we cracked the code, but like, you know, we've integrated with the community here and, and gone out to do similar sorts of things in other towns, I think that would do well for us. So you're just saying try to get other towns to give you money as opposed Not necessarily to money. people? Um, it's really just generating awareness. I mean, if it leads to money, that's great. Um, but right now, it's just a, a, a PR mission. Not a request for donations. Okay. No. If people want to donate, that's great. We're not going to turn it down. Mm -hmm. But right now, the, our biggest problem that we're finding out is that people just aren't aware that this exists. So we're looking well, to solve know, that problem first. Lemonster has a lot of festivals. They have like a food truck festival, a Johnny Appleseed festival. I would bet that you could get a booth at one of those to promote it. So I, I know it's kind of buried in, in, in the rhyme, but there's the next, I think, what, 10, 12 days? There, we're, we're festival laden. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, between local festivals, we're doing a kids fest at Wachusett. Um, we're doing... I'm, I'm going blank. I just literally just typed it up 10 minutes ago. Um, but we are literally on the road, uh, you know, with, with, with the group and just spidering out. Um, so, yes, you're absolutely correct. And we, we are engaging with, you know, local and a bit more remote communities. I mean, it's a great way for public to accomplish public outreach. E exactly, exactly. And, and each event sort of leads to another and another and another. <laughs> so Again, what, what are you actually asking us? So the ask one? was, when I asked Heather the other day of your an email, I said, you know, hey, would you be interested or able or willing to make those introductions? And she thought we should just bring this up for discussion. So that she would introduce you to the town administrator of Lancaster or the mayor a of exactly. Lemonster or anything else like that. I don't think there's a problem with, with the town manager doing that type of interview. You know, she doesn't have a lot of time to actually do the marketing. Certainly. Oh, no, 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 not at all. This was just a simple email introduction. No. Uh, I would caution you that you don't want to spread your resources too, too thin either. Exactly. Let them come to you. <laughs> That's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Were there any, any other questions from the board any, uh, since the last time we were here? Let, let me read this letter. I, I don't have an objection to signing it tonight. It says, to whom it may concern, this letter is to notify you that at their April 10th, 2018 meeting, the Board of Selectmen voted to approve the location for the future Lunenburg Skate Park on town property located east of the Kids Kingdom Playground on Memorial Drive. If you have any questions regarding this matter, please contact the office at the phone number listed above. And that's the Selectmen's office. So is that, was that our vote? Yes, Celine looked it up. Okay. I thought there was a, a clause subject to the because we haven't transferred the property. What does it say? Approve the location for the future mm -hmm. skate park. Yeah. So I guess the question becomes, at what point do we do the final, here's the design approved, here's the funding scheme and everything like that, when do we vote to accept that? That's why the... So that, that, that's coming up next. Okay. Right? Our, our next step, um, our goal one right now is fundraising straight flat out fundraising trying to get to a point where we hit critical mass and this is both in-kind donations right so talking to people about donating concrete and rebar but the first question they ask is well how much do you need and we're like we don't know <laughs> right to know without a design 
Right. Yeah. So we know it's a lot. All right, um, but we need to give exact answers. So we've engaged the services of, and I say services, we, we were talking with several skate park designers. Some are designers, some are design and build outfits. Um, and we're sort of interviewing them, if you will, trying to figure out who is the best fit for us, our town, this project, um, and the big picture. We're probably, realistically, I'd say four to six weeks away from making a, a, a decision and at that point, what will happen is they'll go through a series of interviews, both with the town, they'll actually come out here and we'll schedule like a charrette, um, to use that word, um, where you know, we invite people from the town, from the area, which is again why I want to get out into other neighboring communities, because other neighboring communities will be using this facility to give them a voice so they can come and they can say, hey, I, I like this, I like that, I don't like this, I don't like that. And off of that, they'll create basically an A, B, and a C design. Off of that, we'll come back and over the you know, next four to six weeks, basically by Christmas, we'll have a final design. So we can go off to our uh, potential suppliers, we can go off to our folks that are looking to, to sponsor the project, and say here's exactly what we need, and we can build off of that a construction timeline. So two and questions. that's what we'll come back to you guys, obviously. Yeah, two questions. Did you already survey the, what the land is going to be? And we did. That'll be part of the package you're yes. gonna give to us, okay. And then secondly, Will this remain under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen? No, it will have to transfer at a town meeting to the Parks Department of the okay. Park. Let me say this, what is this? The, 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 the park? park. And that's yeah. why we've involved the Parks Commission yeah. all along. Yeah. Yeah. And, th and then the, the other thing on the list is the uh, maintenance plan that mm -hmm. is part of the, mm -hmm. the whole package. Exactly. Okay. Great. That, that'll be a big thing, a big ask of us, to, uh, of the designer. Yeah. to have that as part of their okay. package to us because we, we understand that's a Good. important issue. That's so I would make a motion we sign this uh, letter of intent. Second. Any discussion? Uh, sure. I'm not going to sign it because I wasn't here April 10th, 2018. Okay. So I don't feel like my signature would be relevant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It wasn't like I wasn't in attendance. I wasn't a selectman. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Any other questions? You can always sign it saying I still support it. So, <laughs> but no. No. Thank you. We'll thanks see you. In, we'll see you in a month. See you in a month. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay. On to current business. The first one is the drainage easement for Matson Homes, 63 Prospect Street. Even folks, I just let you know, falling the skateboard park is going to be a tough act to fall. So. Mm. <laughs> Drainage is such an exciting topic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm living about today. Um, I represent Matson Homes, and this is actually a request for the town to accept an easement from Matson Homes uh, for drainage on uh, Prospect Street. Uh, I'm not an engineer, though I did talk to the engineer today and my client, so just to give you a little idea of what's going on. My client bought the lot. There was a recognized issue about the drainage. The water actually would drain onto the lot. So there was two options, cut a swale through the lot or do the design that we presented to um, the DPW chief. It was actually a little bit more expensive to do the, the drainage design, but it's gonna make the lot more aesthetically pleasing. So we went through the process. The DPW chief reviewed the plan with my client, approved it. Uh, Whitman and Bingham has done a design, um, which is part of a plan. Um, I drafted an initial easement town council added the verbiage that he thought was beneficial to the town and we finalized it today and that's the easement that's in our package actually i brought a clean copy because i didn't know how it was going to print out in the final format so if you want these or if you want i made i made two so you could have one and i could have one if i can approach i would make a motion that we approve the easement as submitted easement and plan Second. Any discussion? I just note that this is consistent with our stormwater plan, that, mm -hmm. that it's actually putting the water back into the ground. It's not going to daylight and just right. going to fill a swamp and other stuff like that. It's restoring the water back into the land. Now, um, will the property owner maintain this? Yes, it's in, it's in the, the verbiage of the easement. Um, just so the board knows, uh, we have a signed PNS for this property. It's going to close the second week in October. 
I've been in contact with Buyers Council. When we did the PNS, I disclosed to them that we would have to give the town an easement. They agreed to that when they signed the PNS. He's seen the drafts. He saw the final draft today supplied by your council, and he approved it. So the, the owner is fully aware of their responsibility once they take title to the property. Great. Okay, and just uh, as a matter of clarification, the one in your Google Drive, th there's very minor amendments to right, And I can, I can speak to that. The town council and I had a discussion today. I had made a suggestion that we attach a copy of the plan to the back of the easement. Um, he suggested we record a plan so that somebody can pull it up and look at it. I tend to agree with town council, and after I spoke to the engineer, they're going to generate uh, what's called an 81X plan, which is going to show the existing lot in the easement with the riprap design, and it'll be on a separate document referred to in the easement. So we'll all go at the same time. I left the blanks in there because I don't know exactly what the engineer is going to call the plan, but what I will tell you is when I get the plan, I'll send it to town council, and before I record anything, I'll make sure he's okay with it. Now, does, it, does this become part of the deed? Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so it's a uh, yes and no. It, it becomes part of the chain of title, but it's a separate document from the deed. So what will happen is this document will go on record prior to the closing that's about to occur within the right. next couple of weeks. becomes in the chain of title. It's binding upon successors and assigns. And so when the new owner takes title to the property, they take title subject to the drainage easement. And so every subsequent owner. Well, I'm, I'm going to we're going to record the plan, then we we'll record the easement, the actual recorded easement at the same time, and then I, I put it in the deed. So that it'll be a reference in the deed that says, okay. subject to, you know, the easement recorded, this book and plage, and this plan. Okay. Thank you. I mean, that's the way I do it. I don't speak to how anybody else does it, but that's the way I usually do it. So on my motion, just be clear to uh, the approve the easement as submitted by council. Yes, and, and through you, Mr. Chair, the, the only other minor tweaks are not substantive. There was a clarification in one instance that the reference to grantor, again, applied to successors and assigns. There was a missing book and page reference that was completed. But I inserted, yeah, that was so like, yeah. uh, non-substantive changes, but I've reviewed the latest draft, and it's consistent with the edits. In fact, I would say substantially all, if not all, the edits that I made, which were substantial, were accepted by uh, the, the applicant's counsel. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the document that's before you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, our next current business item is the ADA planning grant and project grant submission. So the town is eligible to apply for both a planning and project grant to the Massachusetts Office on Disability through their Municipal ADA Improvement Grant Program. We discovered in our files an old ADA self-evaluation and transition plan that was performed in 2009. I will be applying for the planning grant that will assist the town in updating its self-evaluation and transition plan. Although the 2009 self-evaluation and transition plan are outdated, we are eligible to apply for project funds up to $250,000 that remove barriers, improve accessible features, and programmatic, uh, access, programmatic. Pro <laughs> programmatic <laughs> access for persons with disabilities. The Cemetery Commission had inquired about this grant last year, but it was after the deadline to address handicapped parking at one of the cemeteries. And I have reached out to the conservation administrator to inquire about projects uh, that the Open Space Committee has identified as part of updating the Open Space Plan. I plan on applying for the project grant as well and will include items within our buildings that improve accessibility. The grant deadline is October 1st. <laughs> So I, I guess, Mr. Chair, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, if, if we get these project funds, um, is there a certain amount that we have to put in, this, the town has to put in? No, there's no matching there's no portion match. of this grant. Okay, so there, we, we, we have no requirement to spend more than the two, whatever we're granted. Correct. Do we plan to spend more than we're granted? Uh, we have some projects that we do have in the budget. Um, the improvements to the town hall bathroom. There were projects that were submitted as part of the bond um, 
bells such as the handicap access ramp into the town hall. So mm -hmm. those are additional things that we we know about that we hope to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Are they all capital like activities as opposed to operating? Uh, no, some would be minor things to make us you know more compliant. Okay each of these buildings but not ongoing I, I guess my question right. is are we going to commit to something that then becomes an ongoing operating expense or is it a one-time well that's a good question the um, parking lot at the cemetery that could be considered an ongoing because you know paving improvements yeah. Yeah. that are made mm -hmm. so but you're not asking for staffing or no or no that, mm -hmm. that type of no. programmatic right no <clears throat> are we going to put together a list together or or put it as a item for capital planning or something to identify the best use of the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? No, like that would be part of my it? application to on that's due October first. Okay. Do you know what you're putting on it? Like, I think the cemetery accessibility is a great thing. I mean, I. Yep, that was one of the projects okay. I plan on meeting with one of the cemetery commissioners on Thursday. Discuss that further. And when will we hear back from open space on anything? Because I know I've mentioned the town beach in a lot of different ways, and there's very little accessibility to the town beach and not even um, handicapped parking. Um, and I think there's all sorts of places where we could apply the money. Um, with the, the transitions plans, you know, what came to my mind, you talked about putting together um, a committee to work on ADA and I don't know if you've made any progress there because I think it would be really nice to get input from the community especially people with disabilities like we had talked about and talk about the three separate things that are part of the transition plan and that was rights the right, public rights of way so I know like with the complete streets presentation we just had having the appropriate um, ramps put into sidewalks to create connectivity for people that certainly falls under an ADA improvement open space is looking at something like I always think of the lower common we have band concerts there's zero parking so of course there's no handicap parking there's no real way to assist somebody with a disability to get towards the gazebo or whatnot without even having parking um, and so when you really stop and think about accessibility of all the spaces the three were the public rights away the open space and the buildings we always just think of buildings but when you think of quality of life being able to access an open space an event or a park to me is is something I, I don't think we always think about we're thinking about how do you get in and out of town hall not how do you go to a band concert in terms of quality of life looking at the entire community and how does somebody access a band concert or get to a park or maybe get part way down a trail so that they can enjoy some part of conservation land and that's really the intent is to look at the whole town so in order to I feel like we keep taking on grants and money in all sorts of different ways without having done the work ahead of time to either get community input or brainstorm so we have these grants coming at us and we're just applying them to things where if we really sat and thought about it we could say that whole 250,000 could be applied to one really impressive project if we had it on like an agenda item to actually get input but I feel like all around us we're selecting things like with the grants from Tran like the community kitchen and stuff someone's making choices on where to apply these grants without any community input and without any even input from us and so here's another two hundred fifty thousand dollars and we're not talking about where the community would like to see it go or we're not even reaching out to people with disabilities in town to see if they have any input on how we could help them and I think we're really missing the boat on communication in a really big way because I don't even feel like we're communicating with our own board um, decisions are just being made left and right with no input well so as like as in line with what the gentleman said earlier about the complete streets so with the grant you kind of have to play to what they're looking for with the grant I understand the community outreach I think we should do that and that works good for projects that we're funding but it doesn't I don't think it always applies in a a grant application because there's certain standards or check marks that they're trying to go for so to some degree the town manager or, or whoever or the state senator or whoever's filing for the grant kind of has to you know, be aware of what those parameters are and their inputs going to be more successful at getting the money than I mean the town input again the town inputs important for projects that are important but in the grant writing process it's challenging to 
from my understanding, to include that effectively. As to the grant in front of us, <clears throat> we, the Tom bylaws provide they'll be on Americans with Disability Committee. Uh, it's going to be appointed by us. So it'll be coming back to us on that part. And I think that <clears throat> the various studies that we've done on town buildings have influenced what is going to be included in the application. So I believe there already has been a public process in talking about the information and, and understanding the need to make this building uh, <clears throat> compliant with the, the law with what we've got. Um, and then with the cemetery commission, I, I agree that going forward, we should be collecting information. But when we get grant information that we find about last minute, you do have to move quickly. OK, Mr. Chair, if I may, <coughs> this isn't last minute because I attended this ADA trans transitions meeting with Heather um, this summer. Um, it was um, in July. And now we don't have another meeting between now and October 1st. So I guess we already know what's going into the grant. So maybe now Heather could tell us, you know, what she plans to put in it so that we know what improvements we'll get if we get this grant. And that was my purpose of reaching out to the Cemetery Commission um, because I was aware from last year that they wanted to apply for this grant, as well as Open Space Committee, which actually you made me aware that part of their process, because you attended one of their meetings, was to do a study uh, inventory of all the, the trails and networks and what um, accessible needs were needed. So I also reached out to that committee they as well. They have another meeting before October 1st where they'll be able to relay their information? I've been in contact with the conservation administrator, like I said in my report. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So we won't be able to get we won't be able to know what we're applying for. No, because I'll be making the application based on that information and what has been in the property condition assessments, what are our ADA needs for our buildings. Um, I also think within the charter, the town manager, part of our responsibility or his is for the upkeep and maintenance of facilities. So, so I think I this addresses that as well. So if I, I may, I, um, oops, sorry. One, mm -hmm. one, one thing that I'd say is that I think that <clears throat> the other thing that during the charter review process we've identified, um, we've had conversation with Heather about this is that, um, and we've been doing movement on this already, is uh, we're trying to clarify the language in the charter to provide that the town manager will be responsible for an inventory and maintenance of not only buildings but property uh, within the town unless it's under the jurisdiction of the school um, so that we're able to actually have an inventory and we can actually do a needs assessment and then that ties into the capital planning process that we're trying to clarify for what's in capital plan it's not just trucks and buildings it's it's our infrastructure and facilities so I think we're getting to that point and we're going to be doing stops and starts and I would say that next year's grant application for accessible uh, properties might be different based on that inventory that would probably be included. And Mr. Chair, if I may, um, Heather, one thing that comes to my mind, I don't know if we could add it to this, and one of the things I'm really missing is I, I have no idea what the cost is, but I think when I enter in and out of buildings and really start to process these things, um, for somebody with a even just a simple cane, the um, doors that open on their own with a push button Mm -hmm. I feel like make accessibility um, in, it, into a building like tenfold. The entering town hall, these are the heaviest, trickiest doors that, I mean, lots of times I'll have like my Emily on my hip or have my purse and maybe I have a drink or it's hard to open <laughs> these doors. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I say, why don't we brainstorm and talk about things? Because if we could get a quote and understand what does it cost to put a new door in the front of town hall? that has the button. Nowadays, if you go to a doctor's office or you go to the Eagle House or you go to the middle high school, you have those super accessible doors where even if you, I mean, honestly, a baby carriage, getting a baby carriage through a door into a building, when you have those push buttons, whew, right in. So what about saying, how can we make the main entrance or the door to this building more accessible? And I mean, I feel like that, I think that we're not really brainstorming in, in a, a door to me is like ground zero for accessibility because if you can't get through the door. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I think those are items that would require a lot more thought and process to go into them as far as 
Um, I don't know if an architect would have to be consulted, uh, design, uh, you know, there's seems like a larger scope for something like that. And the items that have been identified in a report already have dollar figures associated with them. Um, assuming um, any items from open space that they'll be able to provide me with an estimate with as well as cemetery commission has received estimates for the work for that project okay uh, mr. chair yes and we also uh, talked about an action item of creating a wish list of things you know so we're sort of in the process of doing that already mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, is there an action item there or no. you, you said? Okay. Uh, next current business is uh, minutes. We have executive session minutes for May 22nd and August 14th. Were those minutes emailed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm, sorry, wait. And on these, no. do we Here need to is. take a vote on these as opposed to just signing? Since um, they're executive session, no, you do have to vote for uh, to re approve to release them. I would make a motion that we uh, release the minutes of May 22nd and August 14th regarding uh, 161 Gilco Street as listed in the agenda. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just in case it needs a roll call vote, Mrs. Adams. Aye. Mrs. Luck. Aye. Mr. McQuaid, aye. Mr. Ebersoy, aye. and I for myself. I don't think we have any regular meeting minutes. No. I do have some warrants. I saw a stack of warrants, where'd they go? There's a stack back here. Three of them, I think. So. Yes. Okay, uh, accounts payable in the amount of $157,705.83. Thank you. A uh, payroll warrant in the amount of eight hundred seven thousand forty dollars and fifty two cents, and accounts payable warrant in the amount of one hundred fifty eight thousand eight hundred forty one dollars and one cent. Any action file issues? I, I have one. Mm -hmm. um, during Senator Tran's announcement of the nine items, Lunenburg has been granted of state money. He indicated the town may advocate for these to be awarded once the town has a plan in place for each. So I, I don't know what the action, what we need to do to get the plan in place for those nine items. And I guess, how will the town, how will these plans identify, what's the deadline for having these plans in place? And how will the plans identify what the cost to the town will be for the implementation or ongoing expense of these? Okay, That's so we'll look at getting, mm -hmm. getting a plan for the, the TRAN grants, and, and, and I think that's part of our ongoing uh, wish list and priority activity. I mean, the, 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 the process is, since it's a bond bill, the governor has to release it, and, and in order to do that, you have to have the, the historical shovel-ready project for the governor to actually say, I'm going to actually borrow this money and give it out to you. So we have to, you know, if it's, if, it's, if it's a construction, the assumption is we would have the design done um, that we could, unless it was money for design, then we'd be able to say what the thing is. So, but I think we'd have to have a minimum of milestones. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the expected process on that part? You know, how did we come up with the money? The, the, you know, if there's any intent to combine any other funds, that type of thing. So clearly we'd have to do that. If, the governor chooses not to fund it, it doesn't get funded. Mm -hmm. But I believe it's a five-year bond bill, yes. typically, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. therefore it's, it can be expended any time during that five years. So mm -hmm. if we have something that's more ready than others, we should have that plan, but we don't have to have a plan for all items. You can do plan by plan. So I guess maybe the first thing is just try to um, prioritize which ones we want to do first and come up with plans for those. And which one's ready to be done as opposed to which one's gonna take more work? I yeah, think. like the, the asbestos removal for Turkey Hill seems like that's a kind of a no-brainer. That doesn't need yeah. much well, Several of them are part of the capital plan and have milestones, et cetera, already, and it may just need putting attention to move it 
up the calendar slightly, and some of them may just be on track and we have to submit them. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think you're right. I think we should put some attention on what the nine possibilities are and, and see, see what, we, what, need what we need to do. <laughs> right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry to interject. The Turkey Hill asbestos abatement, that was part of the state budget. We don't have to advocate for that. Mm -hmm. That's okay. um, We've already been in contact with the Department of Education. That's who that earmark is through. The school has to submit some forms to the Department of Education to draw down on that. So that's our first one, I yes. guess, huh? Done. Mm -hmm. Done. <laughs> Great. Can, can that be for any capital, like at the location, or just the one specific thing they said? Like any specifically for specific what they said. for the turkey okay. hollis cases? Yes, yes. Because there's lead in the water now, and I'm like, oh, that's a little more concerning to me than asbestos in the yeah. ceiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the estimate, yeah, used was the amount in the capital plan for fiscal 19. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other action file issues? Committee reports. Oh, I'm ready. At the school committee's last meeting, they had a handout indicating the school department's capital plan for FY20, which consisted of 162K for asbestos abatement at Turkey Hill. And they had amounts listed out through fiscal year 29. Um, the school committee meets again tomorrow evening. One item is action on an agreement for the Bengals football group's fall season. So I guess they're moving along on that, okay. The stormwater task force met on the 13th of September for a final review of the notice of intent for the municipal separate storm sewer system MS4 permit. We're now in the process of reviewing the stormwater management plan, the SWMP, and we'll continue that process over the course of the next several meeting. The Central Mass Regional Stormwater Coalition meets October 2nd in Northborough, and the annual meeting is November 14th. That's it. Yes. I, I'm going to attend our first, my first MPO meeting tomorrow as an official uh, representative of Subregion 3, so I'll keep you posted. Um, upcoming meeting schedule. Uh, October is one of those months where we have five Tuesdays and four scheduled meetings. Uh, we have determined that October 16th works well as for our workshop, and the plan for the workshop is to further develop the policy and bylaw discussion, particularly on the alcohol-related uh, items and the social media items, but there are some others that we wanted uh, further input. Town Council has agreed to be with us for that workshop, oh, and the police chief has agreed to be with us for the pertinent parts of that workshop. I'm gonna suggest that we look, at we, we're already scheduling items for the second, but I'm gonna suggest that we look at the ninth or the 23rd as one that we probably don't need to have. You know, having regular meetings causes the, the town office to ramp up a lot of work and, and we can get it done in three meetings a month. So mm -hmm. uh, if it pleases the board, I'd, I'd suggest we drop October 9th and meet on the 2nd, the 16th, and the 23rd in October. Mr. Chair, if I may, my only comment would be as we approach a special town meeting November 13th, I don't know if there'd be more things coming up that we're not yet aware of or times to have community input. I'm not sure. I just feel like it's real close to a town meeting. I'm not here on the 23rd anyway, so. Yeah, I'm not here on the 23rd either. Well, maybe I suggest that oh, we. We're down to three and we might not quarrel. Well, I'm night. suggesting if I, after hearing that, why don't we keep the 9th and drop the 23rd? Mm -hmm. And we could always add it back if we're trying to get stuff done by town meeting. Sure. No, that's great. Okay. <coughs> that makes sense. Okay. So for right now, we'll meet the 2nd, the 9th, and we'll have a workshop on the 16th. We'll probably do a little bit of business on that workshop night. Uh, and if we can, we'll eliminate the 23rd. You also have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee on the 13th. Sorry, okay. the 13th, the 11th. It's, 11th. Uh, the October 11th. A Thursday. Six thirty. And we have a joint meeting with the Water Commission someplace in there, September too. September 26th. 26th. Okay. And that one's at 7, right? At the Water District. Is, is that at the Water Department or here? At the, at water, the water Department. department. At the Water District. Mm -hmm. Yep, District. Um, okay. Okay. So that's the scheduling discussion. We cool with that? Yep. All right. Before I ask for a motion to enter executive session, is there any public comment from the public? Is there any public comment from the board? The only comment I'd make... Uh, 
Fitchburg Public Works uh, posts their uh, information on uh, the Sentinel. And uh, the good thing that Lunenburg doesn't have to do that Fitchburg is doing, they have to separate their storm water from their mm -hmm. sewer. Because in the old days, the dilution was the solution, and they put everything down the same pipe, and they're now having to separate storm water from the sewer lines to reduce the impact on the sewer. Uh, so they're digging up their streets to do that. So luckily, Lunenburg, being late to adding sewer, at least didn't do those two pipes together. So Great. One less thing for the yep. stormwater task yes. force. <laughs> Great. Okay, and I have a comment. Um, it, at the beginning, I made public comment about hopefully considering testing our meeting someplace else. And when I say things like that, we don't, I mean, it just drops. I always say that, but it, it keeps happening. But that is um, what public comment is. No, I know, but I'm <laughs> finishing mine, if that's okay. Um, and so I was wondering if we could add a real discussion of ADA compliance and forming that committee, and I had volunteered to be on it, but if we could add to the December, uh, sorry, October 2nd um, agenda, uh, an agenda item of discussing ADA compliance um, so that we could maybe once again um, talk about improvements in compliance and um, maybe seek input, maybe do some type of public hearing and maybe um, initiate the steps to forming um, a committee or group to really look at town and not just, um, it, I don't want something like this to be on our agenda as a wheel spinning topic where it's just there so we can just kind of toss it out there and not actually do something about it. And so if we could put it on October 2nd or sometime in October, that would be great and that is my comment. Okay, I would entertain a motion to enter executive session under Mass General Law Chapter 30, Section 21, under reason number three, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's litigating position and the chair so declares, namely the O'Brien Holmes versus Emmerich Pacheza et al., Planning Board of the Town of Lunenburg and Town of Lunenburg Land Court Docket Numbers 13 miscellaneous 477878 through 13 miscellaneous 47887. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Just at the end, it's 477887. I think we dropped the seven when we read it. Okay. Amend your motion. Yep. Amend your second. Yep. All those in favor, Mrs. Adams? Aye. Mrs. Luck? Aye. Mr. Uh, McQuaid? <laughs> Aye. I'm sorry. Mr. McQuaid? Yes. Mr. Ebersole, Aye. and I for myself. Good night, everybody.